one of the biggest, actually probably the biggest B show. I've had some people that send in, uh, send in some of their uh, comments from after their show saying it was the biggest pay-per-view, non-WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Rumble-style pay-per-view, probably since one of the ECW shows back in uh, 2005. And uh, they had probably, quite probably the... Probably since the first ECW one-night stand. That would be the one. And uh, quite the finish here as uh, CM Punk did, in fact, beat John Cena, hit him with the GTS after Vince McMahon tried to do a Montreal. And of all people, John Cena prevented that from happening. And uh, after punching out John Laurinaitis, who was going to uh, either ring the bell or tell the referee to ring the bell, he uh, punched him out and then got back in the ring and Punk hit the GTS, got the pinfall. And the storyline is that uh, at midnight, in fact, after most of you have listened to this, CM Punk's contract will have expired and he has left WWE with the title. And uh, a lot of different scenarios a lot of people had. And uh, this was not one of them that was in the uh, the top tier of, of uh, Punk leaving with the title. It leaves a lot of things open. And I'm not sure how you could be unhappy with what was delivered at the end of this pay-per-view. I thought it was a super show. I thought it was one of the best, I thought it was one of the best WWE pay-per-views of all time. I mean, I think it'll be remembered, you know, partially because of a lot of the anticipation building up in the main event. But, um, you know, it'll be, I think it'll be like, remembered like the Calgary Stampede show, which was another B show, which, um, you know, people kind of remember as like one of the great uh, pay-per-views the company's ever done. And, and I think this was probably a better show than that because I thought that, um, you know, both Money in the Bank matches were excellent. The main event was like a match of the year. And, um, um, I'm trying to think. The Randy Orton match with Christian was very good, and the other two matches were nothing. But they didn't have to be, and they were short, and it, that was it was fine. You know, I mean, it was no one bought the show for either of those other two matches. So, um, yeah, I thought overall, you know, not just a, a great show, but a great way to go off the air. It leaves a lot of um, a lot of different scenarios. And, you know, one interesting thing is is that um, this was not the original finish, um, just um, which I think a lot of people may know, but um, but it was not. And um, I guess that, um, you know, they're, it, it looks like they're teasing the idea of Punk and Del Rio because they made the point that when Del Rio came at, at, in at the end um, to cash in and then Punk kicked him in the head before the bell rang, they made the point that Del Rio never did actually cash it in. And then Punk just ran into the crowd and left. And then the show went off the air with Vince all befuddled about what's going on. So, um, you know, what they're going to do next is uh, we'll see. We'll see what they're going to do next. Um, the problem, I, I suppose, that Vince could um, create an interim championship. There's, you know, you could always do that, and then Punk comes back as the real champion. You could do that. Um, I think that that would maybe weaken some aspects of it, and some people won't like that. Um, but then again, it kind of it, it weakens SummerSlam if you don't have something in that realm unless Punk's going to stay. So, you know, I mean, there's just a million different, uh, there's a million different things that, can, that they can do. You know, and one of them, um, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, Punk would come back as champion. You know, there's always the 30-day rule, too, where you can, you know, of course they can ignore that because you can change the rules in wrestling uh, as you may. So there's just there's, there's kind of like a lot of different things. I just think that, um, I mean, I, I, nothing is confirmed or anything like that, but I think that the idea that Punk is currently unsigned is, is completely preposterous. And uh, how long he'll be out of action, I don't know. But, um, you know, this was a great yeah, story. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say one thing. You're right about that, because the one, the one aspect of that is, is that he's, he's not giving the champion, he's not letting the championship, um, you know, be something that he doesn't have full control over. Sure. Or the champion, or the guy with the champion. Even though, I mean, I'm sure there's... Put it this way, he may not be signed to a new deal, um, but he's certainly signed in to something, if you know what I mean. Yes. You know? The idea, I mean, you know, personally, I, I, I don't know anything, but I know that, like, as of about three weeks ago, when I saw the direction of this storyline was going, and I talked about it, the, 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 the way that they were pushing Punk and how hard they were pushing it and how hard, I mean, just basically building the entire company around him. The idea that you're building your entire company around a guy who is unsigned, on July 18th. I mean, just it, it's so against anything that WWE has done really ever. Um, ever. Ever. Yeah. So, so the idea that, you know, he's, I mean, he wouldn't show up in TNA anyway. I mean, it's, it's, that's beyond ridiculous. But, yeah. you know, we the, the idea that there anyway. anything that he does from this point forward is not being done with, with full control and knowledge of WWE is just completely ridiculous. Oh, I, yeah. I like guess, if he shows up at, like, um, you know, another show or something like that. I mean, that's, that's a deal that Vince has worked out, or, you know, or, or that's been worked out through Vince. That's not a deal that, you know, if he does something where he shows up on somebody else's show, you know. 
Yes. I would guess he, he re-signed probably several weeks ago, would be my guess. And uh, Or it could be just a sign, you know, some sort of a, a you know, an ex, you know, I mean, there's so many different things you can sign. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I mean, it may be a contract that, it may, he may have signed a contract that goes into effect on a certain day. Yeah, could be. But uh, again, I mean, any... The, the idea that but I mean, the point is, is that he's under, he's on, he's under their control in some form. Yes. He's not going to be, you know, 100% free agent, there's no way. Yes. So, uh, again, as noted, the main event of the show was seen in punk, and they went uh, over 30 minutes, which is what they've been doing on the house shows. They did a, a million different near falls. They kicked out of all sorts of things. They did a lot of um, – there were some interesting spots. It was um, – there was one near the end where, where Cena put him in the STF, and he put him in the STF so many times that, you know, every subsequent time, you know, they, they really made you think this is going to be the end. And uh, Punk switched that one into an Anaconda Vice, of all things. And the place just went nuts. This was a very, it was a very knowledgeable crowd. It was a very heel, heel-heavy heel crowd. I mean, they, they hated Rey Mysterio uh, when, when they teased that Rey was getting one money in the bank. They, 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 they kind of hated... Randy Orton, but at the end they didn't hate Randy Orton, which was really interesting how that worked. I mean, um, they badly wanted Christian to win the title, and they got that. Once Christian won the title, they were fine with Randy Orton. <laughs> it was, really, you know, in fact, they cheered Randy Orton like crazy when it was over. But when he came out, you know, I mean, they were there were Orton sucks chants, and the, the announcers, by the way, were told, you know, not to acknowledge. Yes. Um, you know, that was like a Vince order. So onwards through the uh, show here, after uh, Christian and Randy Orton, we had the uh, John Cena CM Punk match and everything about this was great punk uh the first thing they do after the video I, package I, I, I got a question because i have not watched this back yet so this is actually like the very first spot in the match practically okay um john cena takes him down and punk pulls guard right that was a little later but yes well, well yeah, it was pretty early in the match sure okay yeah maybe not in the first spot but it was in the it was like in the first minute or two and michael cole goes he's going for the anaconda device now, he went for the Anaconda Vice about 28, 30 minutes into the match. But I, I, and, then when, and when he did it, Michael Cole didn't know what he was doing. Of course not. Okay, so I, I was watching this, and I, I, I was going like, I did not see an Anaconda Vice. Now, did I just not see it, or did it just not happen? I think Michael Cole was making something up, because what I saw was uh, Punk ended up on his back, and Cena was in his guard. And Cena immediately passed his guard and put on uh, a, a Fujiwara armbar or whatever it's called, and that was the entire spot. Okay, because that's what I thought too. But but he said Punk used the Anaconda device, and I was just thinking like, where was this? I think Cole is like one of those guys who's never watched MMA. Well, we and, know that. Well, okay, I'll, let me just I'll I'll, I'll try but to make Anaconda this quick. The Anaconda device isn't really an MMA move anyway. I know, so but it doesn't matter. Punk's move. Here's what I'm saying. I used to coach gymnastics for like decades. And yeah. when you've coached gymnastics for a long enough time, I mean, you could see somebody do a flip and a rotation. You know exactly what it is, right? If someone does a, a, a one rotation and one twist, I can see that with my eyes. But your average person is going to look at that and go, my God, he rotated three times. They just can't see it. So a guy who's never watched MMA before, he probably saw Punk in the guard and all of a sudden thought, Anaconda Vice! But why? He's, Punk's been doing the Anaconda Vice since probably 2005. Because Cole is an idiot. Okay, it's, it's the best answer I can give you. Okay, well, I don't, I don't got a better one. I, well, then there's your answer on why I said that the announcing sucked tonight. <laughs> well, that's a good one right there. I mean, I mean, th- throughout the show, I'm just listening to Cole with the frickin' history, and you know, like just going through all this stuff, and it's just, it's just like it's just jabbing me like this, like frickin', um, you know, thumbtack in my eyeball thing, you know, and, and part of it also is is that um, I watched, um, you know, SmackDown. I, I actually watched SmackDown on Saturday. But um, the announcing on SmackDown was so horrible on that show as well. I mean, it's just like Josh Matthews, who, who I, I, you know, I, I thought was is, and he is, he's very good when he isn't scared to death to do anything, which he clearly is now because he's afraid to say anything. And you got Cole, who's, you know, that heel character is, is you know, it's kind of run its course and everything. But he actually was the best announcer of the three. And then you got Booker, just oh. Every time the guy opened his mouth, I was just, you know, ready to bang my head against the wall. I mean, when Booker started, I mean, everybody ripped on Booker when he started. And all I heard, horrible, 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 you know, Booker and everything. And I kind of, like, wanted to give the guy the benefit of the doubt because, you know, it takes time. Everyone, everyone sucks as an announcer when they first start, you know, for the most part. you got to learn. So, you know, I've been watching and watching, and it's been bothering me. And I think that it was watching SmackDown this week where, you know, I kind of like it hit my limit. It's just like, okay, 
He's been here for months now. He still sucks. Now it's time. You know, he's he's had his time to learn how to do this, and and he's he's this guy who's, you know, doing this announcer voice and everything like that. And I know he practiced it backstage and everyone laughs, but in real life, I mean, he did it in, you know, in TNA, he would do it. And everybody thought, you know, it was really, really funny, which it is in short bursts. But, okay, now in practice for a two-hour show and then followed by a three-hour pay-per-view. And they need something else. That's all I could say. Cole's been doing this for over a decade. Cole? Well, Cole's a different issue. <laughs> Far less I mean, I, 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 You know, but... But as as an announcer, I mean, Cole misses, you know, okay, so he missed a spot here and there and, and, you know, missed history and everything. But Cole is a broadcaster, you know, as far as holding the broadcast together. He's very good. He's, he's you know, professional. He's really good. I mean, Booker's just not. And Lawler, you know, Lawler's great with JR because they had that chemistry. And you can tell when he's not with JR that he's just, you know, kind of phoning it in. So So he didn't help much either. Um, you know, I mean, having said that, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't ruin that main event. That main event was so fucking awesome. I just loved that match. I thought it was like one of the best matches I've seen in so long, the way it built, the way, you know, everything, you know, the Cena thing with the knee was just, was just great for that, the way that spot went, except that, um, they, they called that and they told, they actually told you about three minutes after he hurt his knee and they brought up, you know, we don't know how much longer he can go with the knee. Which pretty much was, in theory, would be telling you, okay, this is going to have something to do with the story of the match, and then it never played into the story of the rest of the match. Or he could have really hurt his knee. Okay, but the point is, but the, but the, but the thing is, is that they they said it in a way where I don't know how much longer he can go on this knee. Yeah, well, these announcers are idiots. I thought we had that clear. Because because I mean, the whole thing was is that there should have been a spot, even if it wasn't the winning spot, there should have been a spot where Cena, you know, comes off the ropes and all of a sudden like. You know, like something happens, a move that he would normally, you know, any move, like maybe even just a five-knuckle shuffle deal where he just goes in there and it's his normal move and all of a sudden he clutches his knee and, and you know, it would follow up what the announcers told us was, you know, it had warned us was going to happen. So they warned us for something that, that never happened. Well, which, I'll blame the announcers. Which may or may not, not the, uh... be their fault because they may have been watching it and just assuming that that's going to happen. And, you know, if you're not told ahead of time, and a lot of times the announcers aren't, you know, that's, that, that also is not their fault. They may have just assumed that, well, he's selling the knee so much, maybe this plays into something later in the match. Or maybe he did hurt his knee, and they noticed it and thought it was a worked uh, knee injury and, and tried to work that into the match. Because what happened, that spot, what actually happened was was uh, Punk goes for a high cross, and, and he's, he's, he hits Cena, but Cena's like a little far out or, or they're a little he, out he, of position. He, he caught him right in the knee. Yeah, and he well, he landed on the knee, and, and you know it, it got Punk right in the ribs, and Punk sold his ribs, and Cena sold his knee, and then Punk went for the cover. The whole thing was just kind of like, it was all, it was weird. So, I mean, think about this. If if the idea was that, that Punk went for the high cross and Cena just got his knees up, then why did Punk go for the cover? Well, I don't think he was supposed to get his knees up. Yeah, the knees just ended up there, so so maybe no, he no, didn't no. tweak he, his he, knee. He did the cross body and, and and came in low, or Cena was too far away. Sure, it wasn't it wasn't a, off the top ropes into a knee spot. Yeah, so it could have just been it could have been a real injury, or it could have been something that Cena just he decided to sell the knee because he knew it looked bad, and then forgot about it. A lot of different ways it could have gone. But um, key to this match was when they first, as soon as they finished playing the uh, the video package, they cut to a, a long shot of the building, and all you see is this packed building, and all the people are chanting for CM Punk. And they were chanting. They were chanting for him early in the car, in the show, which was no surprise. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were chanting for him in other matches. They chanted through him all throughout the evening. Uh, we were told you could actually hear the people from outside the building. They were so loud. Wow. And there were tons of chants for him. There were chants. There were Cena sucks chants. The kids were chanting "Let's go Cena" and the women. There were chants for Colt Cabana. There were chants for "You Can't Wrestle." Well, um, that was an interesting one too. Is well, I mean, and I guess that that was probably either they didn't know or they were told not to. But when when Cena gave Cabana the high five, which led to the Colt Cabana chants, I mean, there was no acknowledgement. In fact, they even they, they went out actually of their went way. out of their way to say, "Oh, he just gave a high five to a fan." Oh yeah, they went out of their way to not mention it. Yeah. So, um, but you know, okay, of those guys, um, of those three guys, who's going to recognize Colt Cabana unless they were told specifically mention his name? Uh, what, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, Cena gives a high five to Colt Cabana. Okay. Okay, of those three announcers, Michael Cole, oh, well, Waller, and um, Booker, which none of the of three is going to know that he's not high fiving just some random fan that's in the front row? Yeah, you'd think that somebody would have called an audible that, hey, that's Colt Cabana. He's been talked about on television. Okay, that that requires 
Vince also recognized him. Well, that also also that that suggests to you that he's going to be involved in the finish, and he wasn't at all. So. But he wasn't involved in the finish. Well, maybe this is just it, probably I don't know. If you well, want to do something, <laughs> well, so I'm saying if you mention him, then people are going to assume he's involved in the finish, and then when he's not, it's like, well, what did you mention him for? You're, you're screwed either way. And me, you know what? It's best that he was just a guy tonight. If you're going to use him later, it's fine that he was just a guy tonight. It can play into the storyline later on somehow. I don't know how. Yeah, but everyone chanted his name. Yeah, which they didn't acknowledge. So uh, they had a uh, a great little match here. Great match, uh, as noted. Tons of stuff back and forth, and uh, they kicked out of all of these these different finishes and that sort of thing. And the funny thing is, finally Vince and John Laurinaitis come out. I, I got I got to say one thing. That second when he did the second flying knee, I thought he knocked the shit out of him. Oh, he hit him right in the jaw. I know, and they replayed it and everything. It's like John damn. Cena is a tough dude. Yeah, but I mean, he, well, I mean, he could have he. I don't know. They even Lawler even called it like he thought that he was knocked out. He may have been. He got it right, right in the chin with a flying. I mean, knee. when I saw it, even before the replay, I'm going like, "Holy shit!" That's you know. It was uh, it was fucking brutal. Yeah. So uh, they they did a bunch of things, and uh, finally uh, out comes Vince. And uh, it was interesting because you know they'd done all these near falls. Cena had been in danger a million times. And, uh, and you know, Vince doesn't come out until after he'd been in danger like 16,000 times. So he finally comes out with uh, with John Laurinaitis, and, and Cena has Punk in the STF. And Vince comes out, and he looks down at the ring, and uh, he starts waving his, waving his arms, saying, Ring the fucking bell! It's Montreal all over again. However, the referee's back is to Vince. And so Vince goes, God damn it, and he sends John Laurinaitis down to tell the referee to, to go ring the bell. So Laurinaitis starts storming down the ringside. John Cena sees it. He knows what's about to happen. He lets go of the hold. He slides out of the ring, and he apprehends Laurinaitis, punches him right in the face, and uh, knocks him down. The place goes nuts. So Punk slides out of the ring, and uh, actually, no, Punk is still in the ring. Cena goes over, and he's, he's jawjacking with Vince, and he's telling Laurinaitis that he's going to do this himself. He's going to win this match. He's, he's going to do this right for the fans, all this and that. Slides back in the ring, gets hoisted up. GTS, one, two, three. John Cena's beaten. CM Punk gets the championship. Place goes absolutely nuts. So everybody's celebrating. Everybody's jumping up and down. Cena's celebrating with the title. Vince has got this look on his face like, my God, I cannot believe what just happened. He storms over to the announcers. He grabs the headset from Jerry Lawler. Not the house mic, the headset from Jerry Lawler. And he says, God damn it, get Del Rio and his briefcase out here right now. So um, there's like a brief pause. And all of a sudden, here comes Del Rio tearing down the, the aisle. And he's got his briefcase. And he slides into the ring. And he stands up. And he gets high kicked right in the face and knocked out. And Punk goes down. He looks around. He sees Vince over there. He sees Del Rio down. Bell hasn't rung or anything. He grabs a title. He jumps a rail. He starts running through the crowd. And there's nobody there to catch him. He gets up to the top of the stairs, holds up the belt. Everybody's just going crazy. He uh, runs out through the concession area. Show goes off the air. He has escaped with the championship. Unless it's like a dusty finish and Raw goes on the air tomorrow with footage of, of him getting beaten at the popcorn stand by Daniel Bryan. But uh, well, I think that if that happened, we would we would already know that by now. That's probably true. That's probably true. So I think that we're, you know, whatever's happening is happening tomorrow. They should, you know, if they don't get a big TV rating tomorrow, you know, well, I mean, it's not like they haven't done everything to get it because they did. They left with they left you with mystery. They left you with, you know, Cena possibly being fired, Punk as the champion, the whole bit. So, I mean, that's, as far as that goes, you know, they, they should get a really big rating tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, there you go. He uh, left with the title. They, they made... Uh... They actually made a bigger deal talking about how Del Rio had not cashed in than they did of the fact that uh, that John Cena was going to be fired tomorrow. But Del Rio was not cashed in. They did not uh, ring the bell. So we've got uh, we've got two. Uh, we've got Del Rio as both the uh, Money in the Bank winner and the number one contender, which they made a point of noting on the show. So I suspect that um, there's a lot of ways you can go with that. You know, Punk Del, Punk Del Rio is the obvious match. Well, Punk Del Rio, but I'm just saying that uh, you know you can do a Del Rio surprise match that people think is for Money in the Bank, but it could later come out that that's his number one contenders match, and then he cashes in Money in the Bank later. Uh, a lot of different ways you can go when he's got basically two uh, free oh, passes. Uh, well, yeah, well, I mean that's the that's the interesting thing in the sense that. Um, well, I mean, they, I think that they're, they'll have to just make some sort of, an, you know, there, there's so many different ways that they can go tomorrow on TV. Like I said, like, they can do the thing with the 30-day rule, 
Um, he met, you know, it's weird though because you're right. As as Del Rio almost has to be the next challenger for the championship, but that kind of negates money in the bank. So then maybe they got to go a different direction because you know unless he goes in there and like yeah you're right he could do something where he has the the championship match loses it clean in the middle and then uh and then like there's a whole bunch of help and then he you know screws the guy out of the championship which they they could do that too yeah, I actually had a uh, I had another scenario that I was thinking of today when they were doing uh I thought you you do the the punk wins and then you have uh, Alberto run down and and he gets beaten and then you send down uh, Daniel Bryan and uh he gets beaten and everybody thinks it's over but then Del Rio comes back down cashes in the briefcase and you just have Vince explain that the first time he came down he wasn't cashing it in he was getting his number 1 contenders match that he won on Raw and uh basically he get two chances on the show out of that. Oh yeah, yeah, I thought that was a possibility too. Yeah, of, of of the way to do that, but yeah. they didn't do that. Thing dynamic that they've never done before, because usually the Money in the Bank winner isn't going to get a championship match unless until he cashes it in, in which case he always wins. So, so he could also his... be the one who lo- who loses when he cashes it in, and then wins, you know, then wins right after. Sure, because he's the number one contender. Because he's the number one contender, and he still ends up winning the championship. So yeah, there's a lot of things they could do. Uh, to me, though, like. Del Rio's not the guy that I would, you know, but it doesn't matter, I suppose. But I don't know. There's something about Del Rio. I would not have him be the first guy to fail. There's guys that you could do that with. I don't think he's the guy. And Daniel Bryan is absolutely not the guy. Yeah, because you would know actually, that Daniel Bryan is most that, likely going to Because that would make him a geek, the and the last thing you want to do is make him a geek right now. Yeah. You know, coming off of, you know, where he should be right now, hotter than he's ever been. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I, I I mean, my immediate thought was poor Daniel Bryan, first guy to cash in and, and not win. But who knows? I guess we'll. Uh, I mean, to me, I have always thought that the first guy that cashes it in and doesn't win, it has to be a guy that's cashing it in after having won the match two times. You know, like Punk won it twice. So I always thought yeah, that's what I thought they could have done that with Miz this on this show. Sure, Miz could have won it a second time, and this time he gets you know he loses. He'd be fine, you know, as long yeah, as yeah, 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 because he's already been world champion and he's going to be champion again at some point, and yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I, I just don't think it should be a guy on his first ever chance. He cashes it in and he fails. It just well, especially a baby. It can't be a baby face. No, the heel can you you can do sort sort of heat with a with a heel failing and 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 use that and use that kind of like to taunt him, especially if it's already a top heel. If you're already a top heel, I don't think it's any big deal if you were, were to lose in that situation. But if you're a mid card baby face, it, you know it, that, that that you can't do because because then you're just you've just you know made him you know you know you get the golden opportunity. How do you you know where where you can't fail and then you go and fail? That's not what it you know uh, that's not really what you would want a baby face to do. We've got, uh, so tomorrow's Raw, I guess we'll find out. they got a lot of different things, as we noted, a lot of different things that they've got to do. And um, we'll find out what the future is of John Cena. My guess is he's going to be on the show. Uh, we'll find out what the future is with CM Punk. And uh, what they're going to do as far as if they do some sort of uh, change, uh, you know, some sort of number one contenders match for a new title. If, if uh, There's a million different ways it can go. I was talking about this today. That was the key to this entire pay-per-view. The key to this pay-per-view was if you would have done Punk and Cena on any other show, it wouldn't have meant as much as doing it on this show because going in, fans knew either Punk's going to win or Cena's going to win, which would be on any show, or one of 16 other guys is going to win a Money in the Bank briefcase and could potentially either one or both of those people cash it in. It's like, aside from Royal Rumble, there's like no other show that they've ever done where you've had so many different possibilities of what could be done, and and that's why there were so many different uh, suggestions of, of finishes. Yeah. A lot, and a lot of which would have been good. Oh, sure. And yeah. the, what, what they I, did was good. I do good. think that this one, that this, the one that they did is, the one they did is, is, is very intriguing for ratings. Now, where they go with it from here, you know, again, we'll have to, we'll have to see. I mean, I don't, I, again, when you don't know where they're going with it, it's hard to judge, you know, whether it's good or bad. You know, right? I mean, so far, it's been great. And I mean, I think that they did a, they've done a great job of heating up their product. I mean, it's, I, I just think the show, you know, was, a, I, I think the show was a home run. And on a night where a lot of eyeballs were on them. I mean, that, you know, again, if they had a crummy show tonight, it would not have been, it wasn't the night to have a crummy show like like last month they, or whatever it was when they had a pay per view and it was just so so, you know it's like okay it was so so it didn't really matter if they had a so so show this time it it wouldn't have been good and uh, everyone cranked it up and you know the money in the bank matches are always good anyway but um, you know Orton and Orton and Christian you know it's going to be good ninety eight times out of a hundred so that was a pretty safe one. 
But Cena and Punk hit it out of the park. I mean, that was, you know, for those two, I can't imagine them doing a better match. They really, they really had it down. I mean, Punk especially. I mean, Punk had all the pressure on him, um, and and just had a wonderful match. I mean, he, you know, I mean, Cena and Punk. I mean, they did this match once before, which was um, in uh, in uh, what was in uh, uh, Brisbane, Australia, Brisbane, Australia, uh, on the fifth, I believe. And when they did the match, you know, I got the reports it was a very good match, but they missed a lot of stuff early. And you know, thank God they didn't they didn't have that problem here. Yeah, one other thing on the uh, <clears throat> show, very quickly. After all of the the people making predictions and that sort of thing. I, I really think that this was the best possible finish because even if you would have done a Money in the Bank winner cashing in or two Money in the Bank winners cashing in or how, whatever combination you had, if Punk ended up getting beaten and he, he ended up losing in Chicago, I still think you would have had a lot of people really pissed off. And I think that it would have had a kind of, you know, there would have been a closure to the storyline. It story could have hurt line. the town, but I don't think it would, nationwide it would have been No, that no, but I, I do think that you'd have fans upset with the way the storyline was going and that it's over. You know, the only question is when Punk comes back, if he doesn't leave with the title. Leaving with the title leaves so many possibilities open for people to still come up with different ideas and scenarios about what they can do. And I think that's what people are really into right now is they don't know where it's going and there's so many different ways it can go. And they're enjoying trying to uh, come up with ideas and figure it out.